Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a Raspberry Pi powered Game Boy. This thing is the GPI case by Retroflag and it is compatible with the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Zero W. Whenever I hear anything to do with a Raspberry Pi, I'm never too keen. Uh, there's a lot of software stuff behind the scenes which you have to do um, and if you don't know how to do it, it's quite a daunting process. Retroflag have sent me this with a completely set up Raspberry Pi and SD card, um, which is about a 25 pound, uh, $30 sort of combination. So bear that in mind. Um, and then the GPI case is about 60, $69, I think, uh, which is about 60 pounds. So what is the GPI case? Essentially, it is a, a housing for a Raspberry Pi that you just drop the Raspberry Pi in and all of a sudden you have a, a Game Boy looking um, computer which can emulate virtually anything you want. Um, it is running off of a Pi Zero which is a slightly lower powered Pi but obviously it's a lot smaller. Um, so yeah. So this is it. It looks very similar to the Japanese um, Game Boy box art with this sort of lilac-y colour um, and the skeleton design on the front there. Um, and they've obviously got a GPI case along the front where it did say Game Boy. On the back, we've sort of got some schematics of what it comes with. Cable, um, it comes with the housing for the Raspberry Pi, which is absolutely amazing. Power switch, volume contrast, headphones. Um, it's got a 2.8 inch um, IPS display, I'm pretty certain, 320 by 240 pixel LCD screen, um, stereo earphone support, uh, which is pretty good. And finally, three times double A batteries. Now that is the biggest complaint that people have about this uh, GPI case. Um, I haven't actually yet experienced the um, the repercussions of it running off of three double A's, but I have seen a couple of videos talking about um, the fact that it's running off of double A's and they slowly obviously deplete in life. This thing requires um, quite a lot of power for it to work. So um, unfortunately, when the batteries start to deplete, the thing starts to not function um, at its full potential. So then you have to swap out the batteries and it hasn't got a lithium ion battery inside it. Um, I spoke to the guy who made this and I said it'd be really cool for him to maybe um, make like a drop-in lithium ion battery. That'd be really cool. But yeah, this is it then. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we have inside. So this is the um, cable it comes with, five volt um, USB uh, sort of barrel plug, which plugs into the side. Um, and then we've also got the console itself and the little instructions. So there's not a lot of assembly required in this. I'm not gonna show you in this video, but basically um, you drop in the Raspberry Pi. It's got some little th sort of thumb screws that you pop in. Uh, it also comes with a screwdriver, which is very nice. Thank you for this screwdriver. Um, and it can come out and go from flathead to Phillips in just like that. So very fancy. Um, the instructions are pretty self-explanatory. Nice and clean, um, four or five steps involved. So pretty easy. Um, and then here it is. This is the Raspberry Pi powered GPI case. And as you will see, it looks amazing. It's a little bit smaller than the actual DMG Game Boy, uh, which I really, really like. It's um, a lot shorter, um, probably about sort of a centimeter shorter, a centimeter thinner. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just looks amazing. It's absolutely gorgeous. The screen is obviously far bigger. Um, and the buttons are pretty much the same. But what's cool is they've actually made smaller versions of the DMG button. So you can see there that the, uh, the D-pad is the same sort of style, but it's smaller. Same with the start and select and same with the, uh, the A and B. Um, and you've also got X and Y on there as well for SNES. How do you play SNES without shoulder buttons? Well, there's some shoulder buttons on the back and they just look fantastic. Really, really nice. So here it is. I mean, it is goddamn gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, it's got a small little battery cover as well, which looks a lot like the DMG one. Three uh, double A's, and there's also a safe um, power off button in there as well, which you'd have to use, you'd have to get at that with maybe like a toothpick or something. And this is where the Raspberry Pi goes, inside this little gorgeous thing. Um, you have full access to the micro SD card just by lifting up this little flap like so, um, and then you can see that in there. Um, and then it just slots back in. It's got the same sort of pins as a uh, DMG Game Boy. So, I mean, the whole thing is just being beautifully done. There's your input for your power on the side as well. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So the turning on process takes a few seconds. It's got some slightly weird 
Star Wars theme going on. I'm sure you can probably change that with no problems at all. Um, but what it does allow us to do is show us the high quality screen you can see there. Um, obviously it's only 240p, but 240p on a screen this size is pretty goddamn high quality. Um, so I'm gonna go through and show you all of the emulation uh, running on this thing on the main ones that you guys are gonna care about. Uh, I'm gonna do that in very quick segments. So if you have any further questions, pop some comments down below. So here is the Game Boy emulator running uh, Link's Awakening. You can hear the speaker is absolutely fantastic. Um, so super authentic sounds there. Uh, Link's Awakening is a great game to show um, screen tear because as the different segments of the screen loads um, on slightly uh, lower quality screens, you get some problems there. It's quite far away for me to, uh, to make a judgment on that. Let me pull that in a little bit. Pretty goddamn good, a little bit, but it's not that bad at all. That is pretty goddamn good. Oh wow, I am genuinely very excited about this. To exit out of the Game Boy, you just press start and select, and that's gonna be the same across all different games. Um, you don't wanna just turn this thing off the top, that's absolutely crucially important. Um, so next up, let's have a look at Game Boy Advance. So for the Game Boy Advance, here is Super Mario Land. I'm definitely not gonna withhold any information from you guys. Um, I have had a bit of a problem with playing Game Boy Advance games. Let's see if you can spot what it is. Yeah, what is all of that about? I don't understand what's happened there, but as you can see, it's pretty choppy. Um, it could be down to maybe the emulator that I'm using on here. So yeah, I don't really know what's going on there. Um, it's a little bit difficult for me to um, have that have this show this as a reflection um, of the GPI case because obviously that's not the product. I'm not reviewing a, a Pi Zero, um, but in terms of everything else, I guess it's it's working absolutely fine. I'm just not under completely sure why there's um, a problem with the emulation on this specific one. Now for Super Mario Bros Deluxe on the Game Boy Color, I wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison between uh, two consoles that I've obviously um, shown recently on the channel. Uh, so here is um, Super Mario Bros Deluxe running on the uh, Pi Zero inside of the GPI case. It looks so, so stunning, like genuinely incredible. Um, it's it's almost a better experience than playing it on the Game Boy Color. Obviously, you've got that backlit screen, um, and it, yet you still have the nice form factor of a Game Boy. If you were to put it in a uh, Game Boy SP, AGS 101, you're not gonna have the, quite the same um, experience because obviously that thing's a lot thinner. Now, if we compare that to the Pocket Go, there is a little bit more screen tearing on the Pocket Go. Now, there's something quite important to obviously consider when looking at these things side by side, is that this thing costs you know a third of the price. It's not got the same um, screen quality as this thing. Obviously, this is a lot cheaper though. Now for the Mega Drive, this is the thing I've been most excited to show you. Honestly, if you're a Mega Drive fan and you wanna play Mega Drive portably, wait till you see this. Look at this screen quality. It seems like Mega Drive is the sweet spot for the Raspberry Pi. Um, it, as I said, it is down to the uh, the emulator that you use. So um, you know, there's a, every single possibility that the um, the reason that Game Boy Advance one wasn't working very well before was to do with the emulator that we were playing. But yeah, I mean, this looks just speechless. It is honestly amazing. I've been playing this actually a little bit, um, obviously before the review, just to get my sort of feel for the thing. And this is my favorite. Playing Mega Drive on this thing is amazing. We're very familiar with seeing this screen on this channel because we have looked at lots of different um, knockoff sort of handhelds from AliExpress. And Mario Bros is obviously one of the Famicom games um, or NES games that are featured on those devices. Now, what we are probably not used to seeing is one that actually works amazingly. This thing sounds great, it feels great, it looks great. In all honesty, it completely restores my faith in playing um, Super Mario Bros on a Game Boy looking device. Um, because if you've been on this channel for a while, I've reviewed a bunch of these sort of Game Boy looking things which just play Famicom games, and this looks 
incredible, absolutely a gorgeous display. Um, all of the colors seem very, very accurate and uh, yeah, amazing. Oh, that sucked. So time for a little bit of PlayStation 1 and what better game to play than Tony Hawk Pro Skate 2. Uh, this is quite a graphically intensive game in terms of the 3D rendering in this thing. Um, obviously for the PlayStation, you're probably gonna wanna use these buttons uh, depending on which game. Um, so a quick review of these buttons then. Uh, usually I'd use these for my trigger buttons but in this case, you probably wanna use these two because that's sort of where my fingers fall. Um, the buttons seem to be underneath the more central part of the, the back. Um, clicking them here does work, but it doesn't feel very good. It's definitely um, sort of here where these like gritty uh, grip areas are. So uh, yeah, let's have a go at Tony Hawk and see what it's like. I imagine you're probably gonna get a, like a little bit of slowdown on this thing um, because obviously um, the PlayStation 1 is a pretty graphically intensive um, console compared to like the Game Boy, for example. Yeah, I mean, that, that works, doesn't it? Looks pretty good. I'm Probably it's gonna be a bit like game by game, case by case sort of basis, but um, in terms of the PlayStation emulation for Tony Hawk, works pretty well. So finally, before I give you my conclusion on this thing, this is the Super Mario Kart game from the SNES emulation, um, and it's pretty, pretty good. It's really difficult for me to play this game looking through this viewfinder. Ah, This is definitely what I want this thing for. I mean, I'm I'm really bad at this game through this viewfinder angle, but um, it's amazing. It's just running so smoothly. I mean, I, I really don't need to say it. You can see for yourselves. In terms of its performance, you know, it's running very well. Definitely no sort of um, problems there. Another thing as well that people ask me about, which I forgot to mention in my Pocket Go review, is latency. Um, the Pocket Go didn't have a, a lot of latency. This has none. It literally feels like you're playing a Game Boy. You know, the response is perfect. Um, just to quickly show you to turn this thing off safely, if you just press start, go down to where it says quit, um, and then you have a shutdown system option, that's the one you want, um, and then you just want yes. And then it will turn it off for you, um, and it will shut it down in a few seconds, and you can just flick the power switch, and you're done. And so is this video. The only thing that makes this thing not perfect is that complaint with the battery. If you want to see that in more action, go check out Bob Wolf's video over at Wolf Den. He did a video on this, and he actually managed to capture the sort of slowdown that this thing has with depleted batteries. Um, if you would like to see more information about the software on this, there's a guy called ETA Prime and he does some great videos. So I'll leave both of those videos in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thanks to RetroFlag for sending it out. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.